What is happening, fish and friends? Welcome to another episode, and today we need to talk about the art of the arc. Yes, the overhand cast. This is something I see new anglers doing, well, a little less than subpar sometimes. So we're going to cover the basics of the overhand cast and also talk about the art of the arc. Now what do I mean? Well, casting with a more moderate action rod and using that arc to your advantage. So you're probably asking, why is that arc important? Well, the more arc you've got to load that rod and send it out there, you're going to be able to cast farther. The heavier, more extra fast rod you've got, you're just not going to be able to load it. Now additionally, with a rod that's got more of a moderate action, you're going to be able to cast that bait out in a more horizontal direction. Instead of really bombing it up and over, I see so many new anglers doing that, and that's what really destroys that overhand cast. A rod with a nice moderate action to it is going to allow you to cast those light lures a whole lot easier than if you're trying to throw them on a big, huge broomstick. And finally, it's just going to make your life a whole lot easier because you don't have to cast as hard. You're letting that rod load up and cast your bait for you instead of using your Arnold strength. All right, so it's time to get into the mechanics of the overhand cast. Now, you really want to start with the arms, and I see so many new anglers starting to cast all the way up here, like they're trying to chop wood. Instead, start with your arms down here below. You want to start with your arms down and tucked in, and it's going to be this motion, sending that bait out. Trust me, this will help you with that over high arcing. You want to present the bait in more of a horizontal method, not all the way up and arcing. That's where so many new anglers have troubles. Now, when you're throwing that lure out, it's not going to be completely straight, but that's what you want to think of in your mind. So many people say, I'm going to bomb this cast and throw it all the way up and out. Think of it in more of a horizontal method, not the big bombing arc. The third important thing on that overhand cast is focusing on a smooth back cast. So many people try to whip it like you're using a spinning reel. They'll start here and there's a big snap in the rod. You do not want that. You want it to be a good smooth here, load, follow through. You've really got to let that bait get all the way to the end of that cast, get loaded up, and then go out sailing. That's what you want to see in the overhand cast. And when I'm throwing the overhand cast, I do rotate my reel up. You're going to get a little bit more distance when you do that. It comes off the reel a little bit smoother as well. And finally, I can't stress the importance enough of the follow through. So many people will start here, stop and just let it go with that rod tip all the way up. You're going to get a lot of friction. If you're trying to cast farther, you really want to follow through and point the end of your rod toward that target like this. So what applications is the big overhand cast really used for? Well, anytime I'm trying to get distance, it's hard to argue that the overhand cast is the best distance cast. As long as you're doing it right, there's things you can change by using a more modern action rod to get that distance a little easier. Instead of really trying to strong arm it and power it and chop it as hard as you can, just change up a few things and I guarantee you'll be happier. Now, it's also really useful for baits where you're trying to cover a lot of water. Again, distance is key. You're trying to get a long cast out there. It doesn't really matter if you're being accurate. You're trying to get a good long cast out there, something like a rattle trap, you know, a topwater plopper, something where you've got to cover a whole lot of water. You're usually casting way past your target, so it doesn't matter if you're dead accurate or if it drops in a little bit harder than, say, something like a sidearm cast or a roll cast. Generally, on those, you're trying to be as accurate as you can and as stealthy as you can. The third place where this cast really comes in handy is for bank anglers. Sometimes when I'm out fishing and I'm trying to get to a grass edge, 30 or 40 feet might make all the difference. If I'm not getting there, I'm not getting bit. Additionally, for bank anglers, sometimes your access is pretty limited. Now, I'm in a pretty open lake here, but some of the spots you go to, you know, they're just those little cubby holes where you're cut out. So you have to make the most out of every spot that you've got. You know, if you're reaching a brush pile or a grass line, sometimes you need that extra distance with a nice big overhand cast. But if you're a bank angler, just watch out for those trees above you. They'll get you. Let's get into troubleshooting some of these casts. The one thing that I see a lot of new anglers doing with that big overhand cast is sending that cast straight down in the water. And usually that's going to be because they're using too stiff of a rod, you know, an extra fast or a fast heavy power rod and trying to really cast that bait out there. You've got a real stiff rod with a real fast action. You're going to plop that down right in front of you. Or you're just letting go of your bait too late. Something like this. It's bad news. When it comes to getting a backlash on that overhand cast, at the beginning of the cast, there's a couple things that people do that really aid to that backlash. The first thing is going to be lifting that rod and really trying to power through it. Again, keep your arms to your side and let that rod do your work. You can see how much this rod bends. I'll back up a little bit. Look at how much this rod bends. That rod is doing the whole cast for me. If you start all the way up here and throw it, Oftentimes you're getting a little slack in there and you're really just throwing way harder than you need to for that overhand cast. Again, the second big thing is make sure you're smooth on that back arc. Make sure it's got all the way back to the end and loaded before you cast it out. If there's any sort of whip or snap in there, eh, whip or snappers in there. What I mean is you back cast here and instead of letting it get all the way back, you start throwing it forward and it's going to snap at the end of that line. That will backlash you every time. The bird nest in the middle of the cast. If you're throwing your overhand cast and you just keep finding yourself bird nesting out there, the bait's going out, it's going good, and then 
you're probably stalling that bait. You're probably still throwing it in a big arcing method. Watch your cast. If you notice it's going all the way up there and just stalling, that spool is just gonna keep turning. So if you really load up that rod and throw that bait in a more horizontal method like this, that will significantly help with those backlash issues. Did I just say issue, issues? Issues. Yeah. Another great thing about keeping that cast more horizontal and not up in a huge bomb is that if it's windy out or if you need to put that bait in there a little bit more subtly, keeping that bait close to the water is gonna achieve two things. The wind doesn't affect it as much when you keep it nice and close to the water. It's gonna hit sooner and it's gonna hit a lot more subtly than if I cast it up 7,500,000 feet in the air and let it splash down. The final thing you'll probably run into on the overhand cast is the backlash at the end. Now that's probably just a brake setting or thumb control. If you're still experiencing that on your overhand cast, tighten your spool tension up or just make sure you you don't got corp thumb going on which it's just here not doing anything for you like it's dead use it you got thumbs for a reason hopefully you got thumbs if you don't have thumbs i apologize stop the spool with something before the bait hits the water. Your spool will be happier that you did. All right, fishing friends, that's gonna do it for today. I hope these tips helped you. Now leave me a comment below and let me know if you have any tips or tricks that will help any of our new bass anglers out there with the overhand cast. And remember, this is just my way to do it. This is just a framework. Once you get out in the water, you have to adapt your way to do it. I wanna thank all you fishing friends out there so much for the support. Without all of you, there would be zero need for my channel. So let me know in the comment below what other type of videos like this you would see, if these help you. If there's other things that you want me to do, let me know. Can't tell you how much I appreciate y'all. So uh, until next time.